welcome to the Emirates. Well, if it wasn't a huge enough game against Tottenham, it's perhaps an even bigger one today against Liverpool because a win for Arsenal today will take them 14 points clear of Liverpool. I can't quite believe I'm saying that, considering how good Liverpool were last season. Martin Keown joins me here at the Emirates, and Arteta has managed to turn this into a bit of a fortress. They're unbeaten, only Tottenham and City are unbeaten at home. They are flying at the moment. How has he done it? Well, what he's done is that they've raised the bar with the quality of the players. There's now a, a unity with the fans. They really believe in, the, in this group that they can be the ones that maybe go and win something special. It's early days, of course, but this gives you a really good examination of where you are right now. Liverpool coming into town. They're drawing too many games. They're having a bad moment. But we all know they could. it could be switched in a moment. So Arsenal, they won't be uh, underestimating their opponent. And we expect a really good game here today. But they've got to build on that momentum. A yeah. uh, nice win in the week as well in Europe. So uh, all the fans are all geared up here to make as much noise as possible. Jurgen Klopp will feel this. Is he at Anfield? Because it's really getting electric every home game now at the Emirates at Arsenal. You're right. The fans are so happy right now. I haven't seen Arsenal fans in this kind of spirit for a very long time. And other things that help that is giving players that they love, like Saka, new long-term contracts. Do you see, do you expect others to follow William? Um, Saliba's been fantastic. Martinelli as well. Well, that's what happens. And, um, you know, the first thing is you want them to perform well. You want them all to be here because they, they sense in that dressing room there's a chance to win something special. Nobody wants to leave. They want to be here. Uh, yes, the players will be rewarded, but nothing's been won yet. They just won, you know, a uh, better good start to the season and it's going really well. And they've got to keep building upon that. But you talk about Saliba. I mean, honestly, he is an outstanding talent. He's like a Rolls Royce. He's been out on loan. You know, he's earned the right to be here now. Uh, and the fans just love him. And as you say, the fans now come to Arsenal and they think they've got their Arsenal back again. And they really get behind. And once they're that, that, that uh, unity between the fans and the players, it's like an extra force, like an extra player on the pitch. It was tricky with, uh, with the Wenger years at the end. It wasn't always a togetherness here. And now you look at Xhaka, for instance, he's now the fans' favourite. That tells you Isn't how far incredible? it's come. incredible to think that three years ago there were many journalists saying he would never put on an Arsenal shirt again. Just a quick word on Liverpool because it, they've not looked the same side. They've only picked up 10 points. Uh, they're in a really tough place. Jurgen Klopp has admitted they've got deficiencies as well. But they are an ageing squad. When you look at them, they're the third oldest in the Premier League. Now, that smile tells me you think that, that they need a bit of ageing experience. Well, I mean, I think that average is 27 years of age. Yeah. You know, Arsene Wenger used to say, you know, I want mature players. I want 26, 27-year-olds. I don't really want 18 or 19-year-olds because invariably I'm developing them, maybe for somebody else. So, no, they're in a good moment in terms of their ages. It's just um, they've hit a little bit of a wall. And I think they play a really intense game of a high press. Today, it looks like they'll probably play a 4-4-2, slightly changed. Lunes will play, Jota off the front. So, I think they want to share that role a little bit. 4-4-2 worked fantastically well for Arsenal many years ago. So, maybe it can work for Liverpool. Let's see how they get on. We just have to make one mention of the team news because it is interesting to see Tommy Yasu in. Zinchenko is obviously injured, but you might expect to see Tierney in that position. And he's done something very different, Arteta. You you have a feeling that you know why or you have an inkling. Well, I mean, it's interesting that um, they've played the, the, the highest accolade really for Salah because he's an outstanding talent. They've basically said, OK, normally Zinchenko or, or it's uh, Tierney that will play in that midfield inverted role and they're very attacking. They've said today, do you know what? We're going to put Tommy Atsu there. We think he's probably our best 1v1 defender. We're going to stick him on Salah and we're going to say we're going to tie that up. So it'll be very interested to see what that takes away from Arsenal going forward because down the left particularly, they've been outstanding this season. Yeah, It's interesting that uh, Liverpool have made three changes from their last Premier League game. Obviously, it was a three-all draw with Brighton and Hove Albion. They played against Rangers midweek and they've used the same team. Now, that team did very well against Rangers and you could say the midfield didn't do a foot wrong, but are you surprised that Fabinho isn't in? And and also Firmino is one player who's on great form at the moment and loves scoring against Arsenal. So is that a yes, surprise? Yes, I, I agree. Uh, Firmino as well is, is the most... Uh, well, he scored more goals, more assists than any other player. But I think it's time now. I think the manager's saying, look, he wants to do that handover to Nunes and he wants him in the team. And how can he get him in there? And how can he actually apply more pressure on the ball higher up the pitch? Because the defence this year have looked very ordinary, quite shaky. And they're, used to, they're conceding goals very early in games. So I think it's a fresh start. He feels that teams have worked him out a little bit. So he's offering something up. So let's see how the players can respond to that. 
for me, I think it makes it worse playing against Arsenal. I think Erdegaard's going to get more of the ball. I think Martinelli on the left will they'll play in behind that Liverpool midfield and they could be outnumbered. But let's see if Klopp can prove me wrong. Yeah. OK, just before I let you go, I'd love to hear your score prediction. And is there a key area you think it'll be won and lost? I know a lot of people are talking about targeting Trent Alexander-Arnold. Well, I think Arsenal will win the game probably a 2-1 game. It's hard to give yeah, a scoreline. But um, in that midfield area, I think the, um, the Liverpool midfield players are going to be left exposed. Just two midfield players, and I think Erdegaard will just come in off the right. Jesus will stretch the back line to give that little bit of space, and that will be an area I think Arsenal will dominate possession and ultimately get the goals they need. Okay, Martin, thank you so much.